So we we'll start the uh, afternoon session with Dr. Shibata, who's going to talk about merger and mass ejection of binary neutron stars in numerical relativity. So please. Thank you. So <coughs> today, so I'd like to talk about the merger and the mass ejection of binary neutron star merger uh, in numerical relativity. So uh, I'd like to show you that uh, uh, numerical relativity plays a very good job for reproducing the uh, latest binary merger uh, events, GW17 L17. Okay, so this is the uh, outline of this talk. Uh, so uh, first of all, I would like to briefly uh, review the uh, observation result of uh, GW17 L17. Then, so uh, I would like to summarize the typical scenarios for binary neutron star merger based on the uh, latest numerical relativity result. Uh, then, so uh, uh, I'll summarize the uh, mass ejection mechanism uh, associated with a uh, binary neutron star merger. And then, so uh, I will present uh, an interpretation of the uh, observation result for GW 17 So, observation result means that uh, uh, optical to uh, infrared uh, observation result. And then, let me summarize my talk. Okay, so uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, briefly review the uh, observation result of uh, GW 17 uh, This is a key parameter uh, for this talk. Uh, by the observation of the, by the detection of the gravitational waves, uh, like and the bar collaboration determines the chub mass uh, within a very small error bar. And uh, uh, using the, uh, so assuming the uh, spin of the each neutron star is uh, not very high, then so uh, chub mass can be uh, changed, so transformed to the total mass, and the total mass is uh, uh, between 2.73 to 2.78, so it is also narrow range if we assume the spin of an each neutron star is not very large, so reasonably small. So this means that, uh, this shows that, this indicates that the uh, uh, source is a binary neutron star. And also, uh, assuming the uh, reasonably small spin of neutron star mass ratio is uh, uh, obtained like this, so between mass ratio is between 0.7 and 1, so this means that uh, uh, this neutron star is not very asymmetric, so near equal mass. And also, so, uh, like on the back of the collaboration, determines the uh, tidal deformability of, uh, uh, so this is binary tidal deformability, uh, is uh, less than 800, so this means that the neutron star radius is not very large, so, uh, so less than 13.5 uh, kilometers. And uh, also, viewing angle of the, this event is uh, uh, less than 30 degrees. Uh, this is a key parameter for this talk. And uh, associated to the uh, gravitational wave detection, a uh, huge number of the uh, electromagnetic counterparts are uh, achieved. So in this talk, I only to focus on the uh, optical to infrared electromagnetic counterparts. And uh, this is, uh, uh, in a sense, a summary of the uh, observation result. Uh, horizontal axis shows it uh, day after the merger, and uh, vertical axis shows the uh, AB magnitude. And this shows that uh, uh, at uh, less than one day, so uh, this Electromagnetic counterpart is bright at the optical wavelengths. And then, so uh, 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 with, a, uh, uh, with a time, so, uh, so peak uh, uh, wavelengths change. So peak wavelengths uh, become uh, longer and longer. So, so initially, so optical uh, peak luminosity of, uh, in the optical band is uh, uh, roughly speaking 10 to 42. I look per second, and then so uh, peak become uh, near infrared and uh, eventually infrared, and so on and so on. And uh, uh, what is uh, uh, important quantity is uh, peak luminosity at uh, about a half day or one day, so this is about 10 to 42 electrons per second. This is fairly large. And uh, this shows the uh, barometric luminosity and the temperature. Uh, temperature is determined from the spectrum, assuming the black body. And uh, so, anyway, so uh, luminosity, as I said, so at uh, about one day, uh, luminos barometric luminosity is about 10 to 42 electrons per second. And uh, temperature is about 7,000 uh, 7, uh, Kelvin. And uh, using the, assuming the uh, spherical ejector and uh, black body radiation, uh, we can uh, cal calculate the radius of the, this uh, electromagnetic counterpart, and then so dividing by uh, uh, radius divided by uh, time after the merger, we can get the velocity. And uh, uh, it is found that the velocity is uh, about uh, uh, 0.25 or 0.3 uh, speed of light at one day, and then it decreases gradually like this. And uh, all these observation results are consistent with the uh, 
macro nova or kilo nova model. So let me uh, briefly mention that uh, FAT is a macro nova and kilo nova uh, because uh, uh, no one up to now uh, talked about this. Okay, so uh, in, so in this scenario, so after the merger of binary neutron star, by some mechanism, uh, neutron rich matter is ejected. And here, neutron rich matter means that uh, uh, in this ejector, uh, neutron capture time scale is uh, much shorter than the beta decay. So this means that uh, by uh, uh, gathering the free neutrons uh, in this ejector, uh, nuclear synthesis proceeds and the neutron rich heavy elements are, are synthesized. So this was originally uh, proposed by Ratman and Shram uh, many years ago. And then so in this scenario, uh, very uh, heavy neutron rich matters are synthesized. So assumed to be synthesized. And then so uh, because of uh, it's, uh, they are very neutron rich, uh, it's uh, uh, unstable against the decay. And then so uh, by the beta decay and the fission and, uh, and so on, so on, so the, this ejector is heated up. But initially, uh, because the ejector is very dense, so photon cannot escape uh, freely. As a result, so uh, released uh, heat are consumed by adiabatic expansion. But uh, eventually, uh, if a uh, density of ejector becomes sufficiently small, a uh, photon diffusion time scale uh, becomes shorter than the expansion time scales of ejector, then so uh, this ejector starts shining. And according to the typical scenario, uh, initially by uh, Lee Pachinski and uh, later by Brian Metzger and so on, so, on, uh, so uh, it, is ex it is predicted that uh, uh, ejector shine in the optical to, uh, infrared band in, uh, in uh, one or 10 days. And also the estimates, so by this uh, very simple, uh, naive, uh, uh, very in this scenario, so we naively can expect the uh, peak luminosity and the uh, uh, peak time. Uh, this is uh, uh, derived from the uh, photon diffusion time scale is equal to the ex eject expansion time scale. And uh, peak luminosity uh, uh, in this scenario become like this. And uh, here, so there are three important parameters, uh, four important parameters. Uh, one is the mass, total mass of ejector. And the second is the velocity of the uh, ejector. And uh, uh, kappa is the opacity of ejector. And uh, so using the typical value for this, so we have uh, uh, this value, and uh, the peak time is uh, approximately one day, about or two uh, week or something like that. So this uh, shows that uh, uh, electromagnetic counterparts of the GW17, H17, are roughly speaking, consistent with the uh, uh, kilonova, macronova scenario. Uh, but uh, uh, there are, uh, and also uh, here, I assume that the conversion rate of the heat from the uh, unstable nuclear a new nuclei uh, as a 10 to minus 6. Uh, anyway, so this is also very important, but I think that uh, for this, uh, Kenta, we talk in detail later, uh, tomorrow. And then, so as I said, so there are three important parameters, uh, mass and velocity and kappa. And among them, so uh, most uncertain parameter is uh, kappa, because the uh, mass is uh, uh, at most in the range between 10 to minus 3, 10 to minus 2 solar mass. And the velocity is, uh, roughly speaking, uh, of order 0.1 speed of light. But the kappa could be uh, in a huge range. So kappa could be changed by two, uh, two order of magnitude. And uh, this kappa, uh, as I talked uh, in the following, so uh, this kappa uh, is determined by the uh, lanthanoid diffraction. And uh, because the lanthanoid diffraction is uh, very uncertain, so as a result, this kappa could be changed by two uh, order of magnitude. So before going ahead, I'd like to uh, talk about uh, this uncertainty in more detail. So uh, this is, uh, uh, anyway, so kappa is determined by the uh, uh, fraction of lanthanoid. And the lanthanoid fraction is determined by the electron fraction. So electron fraction is y e is deta uh, defined by this. So this is a, a proton fraction divided by a nucleon fraction. So in other words, so y e is uh, uh, an uh, Y e is uh, anti neutron richness. So I mean that if Y e is small, so proton is fraction is small, so neutron rich. So anyway, so this shows that uh, neutron richness. So anyway, so uh, so this is a, a result for the nuclear synthesis calculation, and the horizontal axis is the atomic number, and the uh, uh, vertical axis is the mass fraction. So here, so uh, so they calculated for three cases. 
In one case, so y is in a very uh, wide range between 0.1 to 0.4. So this means that the uh, ejector could be a neutron rich, extremely neutron rich, or a weakly neutron rich. And uh, well, green shows y equal uh, 0.25, and uh, blue shows 0.3. And so this shows that uh, uh, in the presence of a small y element, like 0.1, uh, so we can have the uh, heavy element like this up to here. Uh, but by contrast, if y is not very large, point, point 0.25 is a, uh, uh, we usually say that it's very neutral, rich, but uh, even in this case, uh, we cannot have the uh, heavy element. And if uh, y is uh, a point 0.3, so we cannot have uh, any lanternoid element. So this shows that the uh, lanternoid fraction is uh, uh, sensitive. It uh, depends on the uh, y. And in particular, so, uh, so minimum value of y. And, uh, in, so, and this uh, uh, fractional dependence uh, severely determines the uh, opacity of the uh, ejector. Uh, this is the opacity as a function of wavelengths. And if y is small, if the uh, ejector has a small y element, then so opacity is uh, very large, like this. So, so typically larger than uh, uh, 1. In, uh, from the optical to the infrared band. Uh, but uh, if y is not very small, 0.25, so opacity degrees by uh, order of magnitude, and if y is uh, 0.3, so opacity is uh, significantly decreased. So this shows that uh, y e, so electron fraction is a key uh, for interpreting the uh, observation result of the uh, Newton submerger. Okay, so the, uh, this is a, 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 a mass fraction of lanthanoid. Uh, as a function of y e. So this shows that uh, if y e is uh, larger than uh, 0.25 or 0.3 or something like that, so lanthanoid fraction is very, very small, almost no lanthanoid uh, synthesized. Uh, but uh, by contrast, if y e is smaller than 0.25, uh, lanthanoid fraction is very large. So this shows that the uh, uh, following. Roughly speaking, uh, if ejector contains a significant amount of y e, uh, with uh, 0.25, less than 0.25, kappa could be very large. So kappa is determined from this line, so kappa could be very large, roughly 10. Uh, and uh, if uh, y is uh, in a very narrow range, then so kappa could be uh, order one or something like that. But if y is uh, larger than 0.3 or 0.27 or something like that, uh, kappa could be uh, point order 0.1. So this is a typical value for, uh, for example, for the uh, uh, for the uh, gas with iron, so this is a, a typical value. And then, anyway, so even in the case, uh, lanthanoid is uh, uh, produced significantly, uh, kappa could be 10, but otherwise, kappa is a 0.1 or something like that. This is uh, uh, important for the uh, subsequent uh, my talk. Okay, so uh, from now, so I'd like to talk about the uh, typical scenario based on the numerical relativity scenario. So first of all, I would like to show you uh, s uh, some uh, animation for a uh, uh, neutron star merger. Uh, for this animation, uh, for I will show you uh, four cases. And all four cases, uh, ma mass of each neutron star is uh, 1.35, 1.35 solar mass. Uh, but the uh, equation of state are, dif are different. Uh, uh, this is the name of the equation of state. And uh, for this case, so radius is uh, 11 kilometers. So it's a re relatively small neutron star. But for this case, uh, R is uh, about 15 kilometers and relatively large neutron star. And I should note that uh, all EOS employed here satisfies the uh, maximum mass is larger than, for ma maximum mass for given equation of state is larger than two solar mass. It is a severe constraint from binary parser observations. Okay, let me show you animation. Uh, this, is, this shows the uh, density in the equatorial plane. And uh, any so conclusion is very simple. After the merger of a neutron star, so merger remnant uh, colla don't colla doesn't collapse to the black hole soon, irrespective of the equation of state. For all the cases, a neutron stars are formed. Of course, for some equation of state, uh, eventually a uh, black hole could be formed. For, for example, for this case, I, uh, for this case, uh, black hole is formed eventually after the uh, significant transport of the angular momentum, but it takes a time. But anyway, so the important uh, message from uh, animation is that uh, uh, typical remnant of oh, so black hole is formed. 
Uh, typical remnant after the merger of uh, uh, neutrons, after the merger of binary neutron stars, a uh, uh, massive neutron star is respective of the EOS for a canonical mass. Canonical mass is a 0.7 or 0.8 or 0.6 solar mass. So uh, this is a, a summary for the uh, possible outcomes of the binary neutron star merger. And after the merger, uh, as I said, uh, black hole or neutron stars are formed. Uh, of course, if a mass of the total mass of the binary neutron star is sufficiently high, then so after, soon after the merger, black hole could be formed. And, and in the presence of the uh, uh, mass asymmetry, black hole could be surrounded by disk. Uh, on the other hand, if mass is, uh, total mass is uh, not uh, sufficiently large, then so uh, at least temporarily, uh, massive, hypermassive or massive neutron stars are formed. And then uh, after the, some uh, mechanism, uh, complicated physical mechanism, uh, massive neutron star could uh, eventually uh, collapse the black hole surrounded by this. Uh, but so our uh, many numerical relativity, uh, our and the others numerical relativity simulation shows that uh, if uh, total mass is uh, smaller than the 2.8 solar mass, and uh, with the uh, equation of state, such uh, this with the EOS with the equation of state that can reproduce a two solar mass neutron star, uh, this is a uh, uh, typical. Uh, fate for the binary neutron star merger. This is a very, uh, I think this is uh, one of the uh, most important uh, consequences of a bi uh, neutron star merger simulation in numerical relativity. And uh, as I said uh, in the introduction, uh, mass of the, uh, this event is uh, between 2.73 to 2.78 solar mass with a 90% confidence level. So this means that uh, in this uh, merger event, uh, this scenario is likely. So then, so we should consider the scenario based on the uh, uh, assumption that uh, after the merger in this event, a massive neutron star is formed. Okay, so in this scenario, uh, this is a, a, a predicted mass ejection history. So this shows, a, a, this, this shows the uh, time after the merger, uh, 10, 10 milliseconds, 100 milliseconds, and uh, one second. And uh, at soon after the merger, uh, very violent uh, shocks appear because uh, uh, each neutron star has a very uh, fast motion and then so strong shock occurs and then so associated with such a strong shock, uh, mass, uh, matter uh, of a binary neutron star is ejected dynamically. We call it uh, such a, a mass ejection is a dynamical ejection. Uh, then so, uh, as I said, uh, massive neutron star is uh, formed after the merger. Then so uh, associated with uh, MHD or viscous process uh, from the such a remnant mass could be uh, ejected. And uh, in addition, after the merger, not only the, not only the uh, massive neutron star, but also the uh, surrounding uh, big torus is formed due to the angular momentum transport mechanism. Then so uh, from the such a uh, torus, uh, uh, mass is ejected in a fairly long time scale. Long, long means at, uh, at most 10, 1 or 10 seconds, but anyway, so it's very long compared with the dynamical time scale. So there are uh, pos three possible mass ejection mechanisms for binary neutron star merger. And in addition, also, uh, neutron physics play a very important role in this uh, problem. So because uh, uh, after the merger, uh, uh, density and the temperature states are very high. So, so this means that uh, such a major remnant is a uh, 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 strong emitter of uh, neutrinos. And uh, so in particular, in the presence of massive neutron star at the center, uh, this could be a very strong neutron irradiation uh, sources. Uh, eventually, so such a new massive neutron star like, is likely to collapse the black hole. Then so uh, uh, neutron uh, irradiation uh, play a minor role, but uh, up, at least up, uh, until, the, uh, black, uh, until the black hole formation, uh, this process is very important. So I'd like to talk about this data. Okay, so. So from now, so I like to show you that uh, each mechanism. Uh, first, I like to show you the uh, dynamical ejection mechanism. And uh, so this is an uh, animation uh, of the one of the animations uh, which uh, for the simulation which we performed uh, uh, by numerical radiation, numerical radiation hydrodynamic simulation in, uh, in uh, numerical relativity. Uh, for this uh, case, uh, mass is uh, very typical, so 1.3 and 1.4. And this shows the uh, uh, density in the orbital plane. And this shows the density in the XG plane. And uh, this is the evolution of the neutron luminosity. 
Okay, let me show you a animation. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, after the merger, a strong shock occurs. Then so matter is ejected due to the shock heating, and also tidal torque. Tidal torque by the tidal torque, matter is ejected in the equatorial plane. Uh, by contrast, by the shock heating, uh, matter is ejected almost in a quasi-spherical manner like this. And uh, in addition, uh, neutron luminosity is very high. Typically, uh, several times 10 to 53 in the early phase. So this uh, could affect the uh, uh, ejector chemical com chemical status significantly. And uh, we performed uh, several simulations, and we and also, uh, for example, uh, uh, Thomas here performed uh, many simulations. And uh, uh, typically, uh, total mass of the dynamical ejector is uh, between 0.1 percent to 1 percent of solar mass, and uh, this value depends strongly on the equation of state. But uh, it is in a range in a, but, uh, in, by, in a range of factor 10. And for this case, so electron fraction profile uh, becomes typically like this. So. So this is a uh, uh, horizontal axis shows the uh, electron fraction, and this is a fraction mass. And uh, this shows that, uh, uh, so this is, I show the uh, three cases, uh, three different uh, cases of equation of state. And uh, irrespective of the equation of state, uh, Ye distributed uh, very widely like this. So as I said in the introduction, in this case, uh, we have a very neutron-rich matter, and also we have a less neutron-rich matter. And uh, what is important is that in this case, uh, there are uh, many, much material so for which uh, Y is uh, smaller than 0.25. So this means that uh, this ejector uh, synthesizes uh, 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 lanternoid significantly. So this is the uh, abundance pattern calculated from the numerical relativity result of Y. Uh, this is a mass number as a function of abundance. And because uh, uh, we have a uh, a wide variety of uh, uh, ejector material, so from the y equal 0.1 to 0.5, then so we have a, a wide variety of uh, uh, neutron rich matter like this. So, so here, so for smaller mass component is uh, produced from the uh, high y component, and the heavy component uh, is uh, synthesized from the low y component. So neutron rich matter produces a heavy component, and uh, uh, less neutron rich matter uh, synthesizes uh, less and uh, sm smaller mass number component. And uh, what is important is uh, uh, here is a uh, uh, lanternoid. So this shows that by the uh, dynamical ejector, uh, uh, a sufficient amount of a lanternoid is uh, synthesized. So this means that uh, uh, for this ejector, uh, opacity is very high. So, in your, so by dynamical ejector, it is very good to produce a, a wide variety of other process element. But uh, with this, uh, kappa is very high. So then, so uh, estimated uh, luminosity and uh, peak time is uh, become like this. Uh, because kappa is very high, so if kappa is small, this could be large, because uh, this is uh, minus one half. Then, yeah, so because kappa is very high, so luminosity, peak luminosity cannot be very high. And also peak time, uh, because of this half, so peak time is very high, very, very, very long. So in this case, about four days. So, so then, so uh, this cannot be, uh, cannot well reproduce the uh, observational result of electromagnetic counterpart of GW17A17. Uh, okay, so again, so I'll show you uh, this uh, figure. So this is a uh, uh, result of a uh, uh, several result of, of a different uh, wavelengths of uh, electromagnetic counterpart of GW17A17. And uh, as I said uh, in the introduction, uh, peak luminosity for this event is uh, 10 to 42 x per second. But uh, by dynamical ejector, it's very difficult to uh, reproduce such a value because uh, uh, kappa is very high. And uh, also, peak uh, time is very uh, long. So, so though this means that uh, uh, maybe so the rate time uh, brightening in the infrared band could be uh, interpreted by the uh, dynamical ejector, but uh, uh, for this component, uh, dynamical ejector cannot explain. So we have to consider the, uh, the, other, uh, pro, uh, uh, the other possibility. OK, so now so then we consider the uh, viscous ejector. So as I said uh, in the section uh, two, so 
after the dynamical ejector, by, uh, after the uh, merger occurs, we have a merger remnant. And uh, from such a merger remnant, uh, mass ejection could occur. Uh, so this is uh, what I said. Uh, so realistic remnant uh, for this event is likely to be the uh, uh, massive neutron star surrounded by torus. But here, important thing is that the uh, neutron star is uh, usually magnetized. So this means that the major remnant should be magnetized. And uh, uh, also, uh, major remnant is a highly dynamical uh, <coughs> state. So in such case, uh, uh, MHC turbulence could be uh, induced. And then so uh, viscosity is uh, effectively uh, could be induced for such ejector. So, uh, so then maybe so viscous effect play an important role. Uh, this is actually the case. Uh, so this is uh, uh, our high resolution simulation by uh, QG. So this shows the animation for the merger, animation uh, for the merger simulation with a very high resolution, 17.5 uh, meter. So 17.5 meter is uh, so from here from there. Uh, anyway, so in this case, so for the 10 kilometer radius, we have a, we had we uh, prepared a very high resolution. And then, so let me show you again. Then, so what happens is that uh, in the shear layer, we have uh, many vortices. So you, you can see the many vortices in the shear layer. And whenever we have a shear layer, velocity shear layer, we have a, a huge amount of vortices. And because it is magnetized, in the presence of uh, vortices, so magnetic field is uh, uh, bounded. And as a result, so in such a major remnant, magnetic field uh, uh, strength is uh, significantly amplified. So in such case, uh, we don't know what happens, but uh, so some natural uh, consideration is that in such a uh, highly amplified magnetic field with a highly uh, uh, with a high vortices, uh, turbulence maybe would be enhanced. So this, so we, in the presence of such a high turbulence, uh, it is natural to consider that uh, a high viscosity uh, could be induced, as in the case of the uh, accretion disk around the uh, neutron stand black hole. So motivated by this idea, uh, we performed the uh, so viscous hydrodynamic simulation. But before we performed the viscous hydrodynamic simulation, uh, several uh, in this uh, several authors performed uh, uh, very, very important and interesting simulations. Uh, these are list, and uh, uh, so MPA group is among them. And uh, they performed a uh, uh, viscous uh, simulation for the torus surrounding a black hole. And actually, so indeed, uh, they found that uh, uh, mass ejection from such a torus is very important. But the uh, major remnant uh, here is uh, uh, not a torus surrounded by black hole. In this case, uh, major remnant is a uh, a torus surrounded by a neutron star. And uh, in this case, not only the torus, but also neutron star is a differentially rotating in the highly magnetized. So this means that uh, uh, not only torus, but also uh, remnant neutron star uh, is uh, the subject to the uh, viscous hydrodynamics. So, so motivated by this idea, we perform the uh, numerical, numerical relativity, viscous numerical relativity simulation for the major remnant. And the other important thing is that uh, in the absence of the massive neutron star, uh, neutrino effect is not significantly, of course, it's, uh, it plays a, play a role, but uh, it's uh, significantly strong. But in the presence of the massive neutron star, uh, massive neutron star is a very strong emitter of neutrino star. And then so neutrino physics plays a very important role for this uh, system. So, Motivated by this idea, we performed a viscous radiation hydrodynamic simulation for a major remnant of binary neutron star. OK, so let me show you, a, a, well, before going ahead, so I'd like to show a detail. But maybe so you are not very interested in detail, but so I very shortly talk about it. Anyway, we performed a, a viscous hydrodynamic simulation. And uh, such a, a formulation in general relativity was uh, proposed by Israel Stuart uh, about 40 years ago. This is a, a covariant causal uh, GR viscous hydrodynamics formulation. We employ such a formulation. And uh, in, as an initial condition, we employ a remnant of a binary neutron star merger because uh, we like to have a realistic uh, result. And uh, for uh, EOS, so we use a DD2, so for which satisfies the two solar mass constraint and uh, with such an equation of state uh, after the major long-lived neutron star is formed. 
And uh, for this simulation, we assume axial symmetry. So because after the merger of binary neutrons, uh, eventually the uh, system relaxed to uh, nearly axisymmetric state. And in addition, with the uh, assumption of the axial symmetry, uh, we can save the computation time. Because uh, we like to perform a simulation for more than seconds, and uh, we have to save a time, computation time. And uh, so viscous, so the uh, weak point of uh, viscous dynamics is that uh, uh, we have to uh, give uh, this viscous parameter. And for this, uh, we assume that uh, this uh, very well-known uh, alpha viscous pre prescription with uh, H is a uh, scalar height and uh, CS is a uh, sound velocity and alpha is uh, the so-called alpha viscous parameter. And uh, in this uh, simulation, uh, we employ uh, alpha with an uh, uh, order of 10 to minus 2. And uh, this is a, a typical time scale with this prescription. And uh, we have uh, two uh, targets. One is a mass remnant neutron star, and the other is a torus surrounding a uh, neutron star. And uh, for a uh, neutron star, uh, viscous time scale is about 10 milliseconds. Uh, on the other hand, uh, for the disk or torus surrounding the uh, central object, uh, viscous time scale is about 300, uh, several hundred milliseconds. And so we have two interest uh, phase for this problem. OK, so now let me show you an uh, animation. So maybe it is not to take a look at this one. So I, I need a detailed uh, explanation. OK, so. As I said in the previous biograph, viscous time scale, viscous time scale uh, in the massive neutron star is approximately 10 milliseconds. But the 10 milliseconds uh, proceed very soon in this animation. Right. So you can take a look at uh, something happen soon after the animation starts. So you can see the mass ejection in about 10 or 20 milliseconds. You can see, uh, yeah. In particular, left hand side is better to take a look. So you can see the mass is ejected from the center in 10 milliseconds. Uh, this is due to the uh, following mechanism. Uh, because uh, initial condition for a major remnant has a, a velocity profile like this, blue one. Uh, so I mean that uh, around the center, uh, rotation, this is a, a rotational angular velocity as a function of the uh, uh, syndrical axis. And uh, you can see that the uh, uh, value of the omega is very low initially. So this is due to the fact that uh, at the merger, we have a, this time of a velocity structure. Then so at the, uh, by the Kelvin Holmes instability and shock heating, uh, velocity, angular velocity around the central region become very small. Uh, on the other hand, in the outer region, so we have a, we, the uh, orbital velocity is preserved, and then so we have a high angular velocity. And then yeah, so we have a, a this kind of the uh, universally we have a, this kind of the uh, initial angular velocity. But uh, in the presence of the uh, viscous angular momentum transport, uh, angular velocity uh, tends to be flat like this. This is a properties of a uh, angular uh, viscous effect. And so I, I mean, so by from this, so we have this kind of the angular velocity. And uh, with this change, uh, kinetic energy of uh, 10 to 52 ergs is released. And uh, because the uh, centrifugal force profile change inside a massive neutron star, then so density wave is produced in this, by this uh, viscous effect. And then so uh, pressure wave is uh, uh, enhanced, and then so pressure wave changes to the uh, shock wave. Then so such a shock wave ejects a mass from the system. This is the uh, effect by the uh, differential rotation and uh, associated uh, uh, viscous effect in the massive neutron star. And, but then so after this phase, we still have a, a torus. And the torus has a uh, still differential rotation. And then, so in the long term, so this uh, torus region plays an important role for viscous mass ejection. So, OK, let me show you a so longer time uh, animation. So, here, so please, please focus on left hand side. 
the, so initially, so due to the uh, massive neutron star effect, so mass is ejected, but uh, in a long term, disk is uh, gradually expand. Uh, this is due to the viscous effect in the torus and gradually expand. And you can see that the mass is gradually uh, ejected from the system. Uh, so also by this uh, uh, mechanism, mass is ejected. And uh, mass is uh, approximately equal to the initial torus mass, about 5% of a solar mass. Uh, but the velocity is uh, not very high, about 5% of the uh, speed of light. And uh, in addition, in this case, uh, because of the presence of the uh, central neutron star, a uh, very important effect associated with uh, a neutrino irradiation occurs. So in the presence of uh, neutrinos, a proton absorbs the antiproton to be a neutron, and the neutron absorbs the uh, neutrinos to be a proton like this. Uh, but with, uh, uh, in the presence of the very uh, strong neutrino source, uh, this uh, effect, uh, this uh, reaction becomes uh, equilibrium. And then eventually, uh, electron, uh, proton, and neutron fraction is determined by the, uh, this uh, irradiation equilibrium pre, uh, system. And then eventually, so due to the, uh, because the uh, luminosity of the anti -neutri neutrinos and uh, neutrinos are not very different, uh, YE approach to the 0.5, even if initially it is uh, 0.1 or something like that. So and this is a uh, uh, Y distribution, eventual Y distribution. And uh, you can see that uh, uh, in, for the case of the uh, dynamical ejector, uh, Y is uh, distributed between 0.1 and 0.5. But uh, in the presence of a, a strong neutron emitter, uh, Y is uh, uh, mainly distributed between 0.3, uh, 0.25 and 0.4. So I mean that uh, in the presence of the uh, strong neutron em emission, uh, irradiation, uh, chemical uh, property of the ejector is significantly affected. And then, so in the because, uh, uh, because of the uh, uh, so absence of the uh, very low YE, so for this ejector, kappa is likely to be very low. OK, so, so substituting the typical value for this ejector, uh, mass is 0.04, and velocity is 5% of speed of light, and the kappa is 0.1. Then so, uh, we have 10 to 42 elix per second, and the peak time is one day. So this is, uh, roughly speaking, consistent with the uh, electromagnetic counterpart of uh, JW17817 for uh, this mass. But uh, I, we still have uh, one problem. So anyway, so as I said, uh, so this uh, infrared emission could be uh, reproduced by a dynamic ejector. And uh, this early uh, bright uh, phase could be uh, reproduced by a viscous driving ejector in the, for the post merger phase. But uh, in addition to this, uh, we have a very fast, com fast bright component. Uh, fast means that the uh, velocity is uh, about roughly 0.3 second. And uh, as uh, Eric uh, pointed out, that uh, this could be the tension with the numerical relativity result. Uh, but uh, uh, I, can, I can say that uh, this is uh, very easily uh, fixed. So, so I should say that uh, don't forget the relativistic component for dynamical ejector. Uh, this is a uh, uh, ejector mass as a function of the uh, velocity of ejector for dynamical ejector component. And as I said, uh, for dynamical ejector component, a uh, typical velocity is uh, 0.15 to a 0.3 uh, speed of light here. But in addition to the uh, such a component, we have a, a huge uh, such a small component of the uh, first component like this. So this means that the uh, uh, structure of the ejector is uh, like this. Uh, anyway, so we have a viscous ejector here. And this is a main energy source because its uh, mass is very high and the kappa is not very large. But in addition to uh, this, we have a dynamical ejector with a uh, uh, high speed. So this means that uh, so, so even if uh, uh, energy source is uh, this one. Then, so by this emission, uh, some absorption occur in the, by the dynamic ejector. So, anyway, so this means that uh, uh, to estimate the uh, luminosity and the luminosity curve and the spectrum, so on, so on, we need a very, uh, so not very, so we need a radiation transfer calculation. And uh, motivated by this uh, consideration, we perform the radiation cal hydrodynamics calculation for ejector. And uh, uh, this is the result. Anyway, so we employ the 
uh, this number for this configuration. And then we perform the simulation, and uh, uh, this is the result. So you can see that uh, it's not very easy to say, but uh, anyway, so you can see that uh, with a very rough number, so electromagnetic counterpart res observational result are uh, fairly well reproduced. And uh, this is a spectrum, so spectrum looks uh, uh, almost black body, so this agree with the observation result. And uh, in addition, this is a uh, uh, velocity. Uh, so this is apparent velocity, not, uh, not, not, not uh, velocity, apparent velocity uh, calculated by this uh, formula. And uh, but in this simulation, uh, velocity at one day is 40% uh, of speed, right? So this means that it's not very difficult uh, to reproduce the high speed component if we take into account uh, this component seriously. So, so th this means that uh, we don't have any tension with the uh, numerical relativity result and the uh, numerical relativity can reproduce the electromagnetic counterpart of the uh, GW17817 naturally. Okay, so let me summarize my talk. Uh, anyway, so we have, uh, uh, we, I, I said that uh, there are uh, three possible ejector components for GW17817. One is a dynamical ejector. Uh, the other two is uh, two, uh, a viscous ejector and uh, and one is a viscous ejector associated with a massive neutron star, and the other is a, a viscous ejector associated with a torus surrounding a massive neutron star. And uh, these are a typical number. And uh, what is important is that the uh, uh, presence of the massive neutron star at the center, as a result, uh, kappa become very small. Then so uh, bright shining of the electromagnetic counterpart of GW17817 can be naturally uh, uh, interpreted. And anyway, so uh, I'm happy if you are convinced that the prediction of numerical relativity is robust. So thank you very much. Yes. <coughs> Sorry, I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. uh, there's so, a lot of kinetic energy yeah. in the ejector, in yeah. your dynamical ejector. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that seems to be a source for powering the Villanova. Um, oh, this one. So maybe this one? Yeah. Yeah, so, but so total energy is very low. Total energy, total, total kinetic energy for this region is uh, very, very low. So compared with the uh, other region. Well, so what I mean is that uh, still so kinetic energy is, uh, for this is uh, much lower than, so total kinetic energy for this region is uh, much lower than the so total mass energy of the uh, ejector. So then, so this means that uh, still so such a uh, kinetic energy is a uh, minor from an uh, observational point of view. No, no, so yeah, yeah, so it's not very high, so maybe tomorrow, so his, so yeah. his, uh, Kenta may, may, may be the effect of this uh, high energy part, so. Um, I, I just don't understand. Yeah. Uh, Sorry. Uh, I don't understand about the YEs. Um, are they, aware, so when you show a range, like 0.1 to 0.5 or something, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is that, Something that is changing with time over that period, or is that, or uh, this or, is, a, or, or does it represent inhomogeneity, or what? Well, so we, we perform the simulation, and so we perform the simulation for a long time mm. uh, until the ejector becomes the almost free expansion phase. Mm. So this is a total for such a free expansion ejector, total. So yeah, and then so yeah, anyway, so ejector has a so 
in homogeneity and also very high Bercy dispersion and so on. And Y is a distributed uh, very in homogeneity. So in your summary slide yeah. that you had. Yeah. Uh, oh. uh, okay. Uh, well. Yeah. Yeah. So the uh, for the dynamical. So what what is so what is happening? How is it going from point oh five to point five? Oh, so for, so in the so in this it's uh, free, freely expanding like this, mm. and in the in the in, inner region velocity is smaller. In the in the so top region velocity is very high, very relativistic. So this is a typical uh, profile of the velocity in the ejector, and also y is uh, distributed uh, for a wide range between point one to point five. I see. So yeah. it's a distribution yeah. over the uh, yeah. distance over, yeah. 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 over the length. Yeah, faster yeah. ones uh, go faster. Yeah. Thanks. So what I was looking at the time scale is typically the middle sector direction. Yeah, yeah. And I noticed from the end of the 200 hertz chirp. It's better. From the end of the 200 hertz, 200 hertz chirp, it's certainly louder. <laughs> um, it's still 1.8 seconds before the gamma before the gamma ray burst is observed, yeah. and that's effectively the issue of making the relativistic jets and getting things out. But because you're ejecting this, I think the jet will just come straight out, right? So that a the question is and you're doing your simulation in your dynamics, and you're asking the question very early, when does it end up as a black hole? You have some constraint there about the time it takes for a, until the jet sends you the signals. That 1.8 1, 1 seconds seems very long to me. Yes. And your simulations, how does that work out? Yeah, so if a GRB observed is a rarely emitted from this kind of the uh, system, so black hole formation should be occur within 1.8 seconds, yeah, I guess. Yeah. But uh, yeah, right. but, but it's but a you, very weak you, constraint. You had the tree of outcomes, yeah. right? And only one of them lent, left a neutron star that takes a long time to decay. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, but the is, is the... is the other one take up to a second before yeah. it's rid of anger? Yeah, if I GRB is can, emitted. Can, can it, the, the fact that it's over one second, can that Yeah, so it, it yeah, well? it's a very weak constraint. So my guess is that uh, it's uh, less than one second or larger than 0.1 second, but uh, it's not easy to constrain it further. Yeah. Constraint is not very slow. OK. <clears throat> If, you, if you're invoking some fast-moving V of like 0 0.5, 0 0.9 C material to explain the early bluish component, yeah. that would presumably give rise to some radio emission as yes, well. Yes. Is that consistent with the radio limits and yeah. radio observations that we have at this point? Yeah. Kent will show uh, tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's uh, consistent, very consistent, very good for reproducing our radio emission. 